if you really look at your life in the context of two years, three years, five years, suddenly you realize you are being 20xing all the time. You just either always lost your focus, changed direction, or never even looked at your life that way. You always thought life is a cycle of three months, six months, or a year. If I told you, hey, you can 20x yourself, and I told you a year, for example, you'd go, no way I believe that. But if you had the memory of when the last time you 20 asked, and then you asked yourself, can you 20 ask? What would be your response? Some of you may know, some of you may not know, but I come from really humble beginnings from India, a small town called Jaipur. I grew up with 23 people around me. We were very humble in many different ways. Expectations was become an engineer and, uh, you know, get a degree, do the job, didn't do any of it. But fortunately, what kept happening for me is I was always 10xing, 20xing, 100xing, wherever I was in my life. And it's not a new pattern. It's been a pattern for years and years and years and years. If I look at my life retroactively, I found it happening again and again and again. And so I said, there, there must be something that's a common theme, especially in the last two years. I was, and it started with that experience. I was like, okay, in the last two years, it seems like I've exponentially changed, not marginally, exponentially changed. Everything in my life is supersized compared to where it was before. I have 20x myself. So I said, okay, so if I have 20x myself, there must be a pattern. And I found patterns happening, the same patterns happening again and again and again every few years. And then I noticed one more thing. I, real, I realized as I was talking to people is most people have 20 X in their life. But if you would ask them, they wouldn't say so. They would go, yeah, I did a little bit better than last year. Yeah, I have become a little bit healthier. Yeah, I fixed my relationship. Yeah, I made a little bit more money. And I realized the reason why that happens is because most of us are so Unfortunately, fortunately, or because how we grew up in school systems and our cycle was always a year or a semester, we only look at our life in the framework of three months or a year. So if I ask somebody, hey, how's your life? Or How, how's your growth going? They would usually refer to the last 12 months of their year or last three months of their year. See, the funny thing is life is infinite if you look at it in context, right? Life is many years. You've lived 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years, depending on how old you are right, chronologically in timeline of time. And if you've lived that long, why wonder what happened in the last one year? Why wonder what happened in the last three months? Because what really matters is how far you have come in an extended timeline. See, each one of you, at one point in your life, has 20x to yourself. It usually happened when you started something new and you looked at it in a two to three year frame. Think about the first job you ever did. Right? Two years after that first job, or three years after the first job, were you making significantly more money? Yes? No? Not many people? Yes. Remember, I'm a coach. <laughs> this is the only way a coach can do speaking, is like you respond so I know we are together. <laughs> right? If you think about first time you said, I am going to commit to my health, and you actually did it for the two years or three years, did you completely transform your health, yes? yes? You fell in love with someone and you were like, this is my person. You really committed to them, not fucked around with them, like committed to them, <laughs> right? You were like, yes. Did the love quadruple in the first two years? Yes, the understanding double, triple, quadruple in the first two years? Yes. No? Yes. You're not in a relationship right now, is it? You have been eternally single because the love never evolved. <laughs> Did you really build a better understanding, 20x more understanding of that person the first three years of your relationship with them? Yes. Good, thank you. I was like, damn, am I talking to all single people? <laughs> Some I get it. <laughs> <laughs> Too much partying last night, eh? <laughs> <laughs> 
Anyways, so, so if you really look at your life in the context of two years, three years, five years, suddenly you realize you have been 20xing all the time. You just either always lost your focus, changed direction, or never even looked at your life that way. You always thought life is a cycle of three months, six months, or a year, right? Our mind is funny. If we wanted to believe something, you gotta give it evidence. You gotta tell it, hey, listen, you can 20X. If I told you, hey, you can 20X yourself, and I told you a year, for example, you'd go, no way I believe that. But if you had the memory of when the last time you 20X'd, and then you asked yourself, can you 20X? What would be your response? Yeah. Fuck yeah. Right? Sorry? Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> right? So let's take a moment so we can prime ourselves right because you're going to 20x yourself in the next 12 months, all right? Close your eyes for a second. And I want you to tap into your memory. It could be when you first got a job, first started the health journey. It could be the first time you fell in love. It could be the time when you got married. It could be any other time. But it is the time when you started something new that you currently are amazing at. I want you to tap into that memory and start from the point when you just started. This was the time when you thought this is going to be impossible. This is so hard. This is so difficult. I'm not going to make it. This is the time you were like, why did I choose this career? Why did I choose this partner? Health is never going to come back. This is the time when you started your journey. Now jump ahead three years and see how fucking great you are at it. The same thing. How amazing you are at it. How awesome you are at it. See yourself as that amazing person. Tap into that. Stay with that for the rest of the presentation. You can open your eyes when you're ready. Okay? So we all have something that we have done where we have 20x ourselves, which means it's possible for us. And that's the first thing that I want you to remember is that you have evidence that you have the capability and the capacity to create a 20x outcome. Okay? Thank you. Now let's get into something that's going to start our journey in a very interesting way. See, if you would talk to me in 2019, this is right before COVID happened, December 2019, I was sitting down with my annual goals. And, and most of us do, right? We annually review here where we are in our journey and we evaluate whatever different areas of life that we want to evaluate. I wanted to evaluate all of the different areas of my life, including my businesses, right? At that time, I was very successful as a coach myself, as a coach who was doing one-on-one -on -one coaching, it was going really, really well. And so was Evercoach. Evercoach were also doing well. We were doing about three million in revenue, which is fantastic, nothing bad about it, right? But as I sat down with the numbers of that year, I also realized that we were not turning a profit. We were actually loss making organization. It was taking away money from my savings. It was something that was eating into the business all the time. Every year, year after year, we hadn't been really profitable for years at that point. Now, as you sit with numbers of a business that you've been in for four years and you don't turn a profit, and you're a business coach. <laughs> you can imagine what my thoughts were. Right? Yet I was thinking, oh, well, business coach, really? <laughs> you can't make your own business work, business coach. Right? I had just become a father. It's like, will you be able to afford your child? You really, living in LA at the time, which is incredibly expensive for no reason whatsoever. <laughs> it's, not, it's not worth it. If you live in LA, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was like, you can't afford a life here. You can't, especially if you go to Arowan. <laughs> only the people in LA would get that joke because that thing only exists there, I think. It's basically 30 bucks for a smoothie. Good luck. And so I was looking at myself at that time, and I was like, dude, what are you doing? 
You started this thing four years ago. It's been four years. It's not your first year that you're sitting on a last making machine and you're fine because it's the first time you're doing business. It's the second, the third, the fourth. Are you not getting the point? Are you not understanding that this is not for you? That maybe it's time to shut it down. Maybe it's time for you to give up on this dream that you had of, oh, I can help other coaches because of how much they have impacted my life. I should help them to impact even more lives. Maybe that's not what you're meant to do. Maybe what you're meant to do is go out and coach, and that's, that's all that is for you. And that's it. Stop there. Stop. Maybe it is time. Has it ever happened to you where you looked at your losses and you went, that fucking sucks? Yes? Anybody end of the year look at your bank account and say, hey, what the fuck am I doing? Hey. At the end of the year, we go, I worked so hard for this. I'm giving all day, every day. Why is this not working? See, that day I had two choices. Choice one was to shut it down. Was to say, this is it. And this is the end of it all. The second choice was to make a commitment and to say to myself that if I was going to give it all, I am going to give it all. See, what happens very often with us is we operate from somewhat dreams. We don't operate from absolute dreams. We don't express absolute desires. At least I didn't. I said, I would kind of like to grow my business by 20%. I would kind of like to make a profit. It'll be nice to make a profit. You see, when your dreams are small, when your desires are little, Universe just gives you challenges because it's testing you. It's testing you. Is that it? Go. See if you will handle the small stuff. It gives you these little challenges to deal with, like you're not making a profit. Try. Let's see if you'll make a little more profit. I had been operating from that desire for so long that I thought that's the way to operate. But then I sat down with an empty piece of paper and I said, I'm gonna write down what I actually desire. I'm gonna write down what actually matters to me. I'm not gonna decide kinda of what I should do in this year, but I'm gonna write down what is going to happen in a few years from now. I don't know what timeline it'll follow, but this, if I had to just write my desires, I'm gonna write it down. I wrote, I wrote down I have a coach who's going to train 100,000 coaches. I wrote down, I have a coach who's going to make $100 million. I wrote down, I have a coach who's still going to run, run like a lean machine with only 30 employees. I have a coach who's going to impact millions of lives every day. When I wrote that down, the first thought I had was, fuck off. <laughs> that is not happening. What are you talking about? You're just talking about losing money the, the two minutes ago. What are you talking about? That ain't, that's not going to happen. Because that's what we do to ourselves, isn't it? Every time we write down a desire, we immediately tell us that it's not going to happen. Every single time we have a dream, we immediately discount it with logic. See, the first thing I learned about 20xing myself is to realize that desires are just desires. They don't have to be negotiated. They don't have to be right. They just have to be it. When I still think about, when I said, I'm going to train 100,000 coaches, I have goosebumps in my hand. You can feel my hair stand up. And that's what a desire is. A desire is the uncompromised, non-negotiated version of whatever is true for you. 
Do not negotiate with your desires because the moment you do, they're not your desires anymore. What desires are also not is not a checklist. How many of you have set a goal of I'll lose 10 pounds this year? <laughs> That's a fucking checklist. <laughs> How many of you said I can, oh, if I can make $20,000 more, $20, more this year? That's a checklist. That's not your desire. Your, de your heart doesn't speak to you that way. And your heart doesn't speak the language of timeline either. It just says, what do I want? And absolute certainty. What do I want the moment I say it, my hair stand up. I don't know if you can zoom into my hair, but you can see it stand up. <laughs> I'll come down so one of you can see it and improve it. Yes? Yes? But that's how desire makes you feel. When was the last time you wrote or thought of a desire that, made, that gave you shivers, that made you so excited that you could just go, whoa, that's doing something to me? Not to prove it to anyone, definitely not to be right. How many of us have set desires and immediately said, that's not right, like that's too much? Come on, you've all done that. I've done that all the fucking time, right? Do you think it is right of me to say that I should make a million, $100 million? How many of people would immediately go, oh, fucking moron, he wants to make $100 million? But it gives me goosebumps, I don't give a shit. How many of you might have just said, oh, who are you to say you're gonna train 100,000 coaches? Who gives you the authority? I don't give a shit, it gives me goosebumps. My invitation to you today is to find that desire. Don't negotiate it, don't bullet list it. Don't make a checklist, this is gonna be the right thing. Don't think about a timeline. Let it give you those goosebumps because those goosebumps are the only thing that creates 20X. Don't settle for growing your business. Don't settle for growing yourself, explode. Because you're not meant to walk into your future, you are meant to rise into it. So, thank you. So, I invite you to close your eyes now, and if you could have some soft music, or meditation music. I want you to imagine beautiful white light coming from the eternal self, universal self, coming through from Mother Earth and from the skies, going through your body. Let it flow through your body. Let it energize your body. Let it go to your soul. Focus your attention to your heart center. Your heart is a gateway to your soul and to your soul's calling. See a door revealed to you. Use this door to walk into your heart center, going into your soul. Right here in your soul, you may see a little self, a teenage self, a 20-year-old self, your 
present self or your, or your future self. Whoever it is that is present to you is so ready to tell you what you really fucking desire. It could be that career that you always wanted. It could be that abundance of money that you wanted. It could be that wonderful body that you wanted. It could be that partner that you wanted. It could be that friend that you wanted. It could be that recognition that you wanted. It could be that applause that you wanted. It could be that life's intensity or calm that you wanted. Or it could be all of it that you wanted. You know, you've always known, you've always been certain, but some moron at some point told you you can't have it, or told you it's too big, too strong, too much, that if you would have it, nobody else can. Whatever was that bullshit, forget about it, and listen this time. Let it give you goosebumps. If it scares you, oh fucking yes, that's what we want. If it excites you, it's definitely what we want. Listen to it, feel it, feel it happening for you. Smell it, listen to the music as it plays. Breathe in the breeze as it flows. Experience the things that would be around you as you create these desires into this physical reality. Feel the touch of that loving person. Feel your body as it leans into that perfect desired body, that desired vessel. Feel it. Smell it, hear it, and fully experience it. Capture it. Capture it. When you have that image, that experience locked in, you can open your eyes in your time and write it down as a note so you can recall this memory, this exact experience. So you can remember what is your unnegotiated desire. The absolute freaking yes desire. The desire that is meant to be for you has been bestowed upon you and will happen. I want you to note it. that desire for you. I'm going to give you a minute on that.
Even if you don't know it, it's perfectly okay because every single time you'll think of desire from here on, it will give you goosebumps. And it'll keep expanding if you let it. And that's what we want. Nobody can tell you what all you can have because everything is for all of us. See, the universe doesn't have a coda, it doesn't have a ceiling, it doesn't have a place where it says, oh, now, you know, that's, that's all we can have. It ends, the universe doesn't end. Some of you are still in meditation. I don't want to take away your desires. I'm going to go another minute. How does it feel, by the way? Well, good. Goosebumps? Yeah. Anybody got goosebumps? Yeah. Yeah. Just a few? Yeah. Did we get a check-in on our desires, at least a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. Yes? Okay. Cool. Say it again. <laughs> Provided answers? <laughs> oh, writing. Med I see some of people are still in their meditative state. You're still in it fully. <laughs> okay, I'm going to give you another minute then, okay? So I can actually interact back with you. I can have you back to the room because we got to go to the next part. <laughs> Desire is the first part and the most important, yes, because without knowing how you're, where you are 20xing to, it's a little hard to 20x, isn't it? Do we feel so? Yes? yes. All right, it's a little hard to know how to get somewhere if you don't know where we are getting to, All right? But the important part here is your, your desires are not created by your past, right? Because past has this funny thing Paul was talking about as well. If you lean into your past, it will always, always tell you bullshit because it depends on who we were. But we are not who we were. Every single day, we are a different person, so why lean into the past? Our desires shouldn't come from our, from our past. Our desires should come from our future to today. So it is limitless. It has no limitation. It has no end point. It is unlimited and infinite, like the universe is. It's not, it doesn't matter what you've done until now. It really doesn't. I know it sounds ridiculous, but it really doesn't matter what you've done until now, because what you're creating is today which means you get to start from wherever you feel like you want to start from, and you get to go wherever you feel like you want to go. There is a new feature, future waiting for you today that has nothing to do with your past. Your past doesn't define you, it simply educates you. That's it, that's its only job. But well, we are so dependent on that bloody thing that we think that is why what we can have in the future, but that's not true. I want to tell you a little story to prove that point. So you see, in 2008, you might have heard the story somewhere else, but in 2008, I joined this little company called Mind Valley. You all know that company? <laughs> yeah, you do. Okay, sorry. Right. So in 2008, I joined this little startup, 10 people in Malaysia. They were actually operating, I don't, it's camera, so I'm not going to say it. They were operating out of a, a, not even a real office. It was like a basically three-bedroom apartment that they called the office. And they had to put a bed in there to prove that it is a real, it's actually an apartment, otherwise the government would not like that. Right? So it was one of those little startups that you go to. And I chose to go to that startup because I thought, well, I got to learn something new, some new skills. I had an intuition of saying, I, I think there's future in internet. It was because of some experiences I was having in life, but it was like, future is internet, I need to learn this thing. And in India, there were not any education institutes or companies that knew anything about internet very well. So I asked a friend, and the friend said, well, there's a little company that gives you the offer of travel to Malaysia. You can travel to cities around, so you can have a wonderful life. And on the way, you'll work for us, and you can learn something. So I was like, great, I'll go work for this company. I had no idea what they did. Before that time, I had read one book. 
Who moved my cheese? <laughs> so I go to this little company, and I go December 2008, it was 16th of December, and like you would expect, a few days later, everybody was on vacation, because it was Christmas time, and half the company were travelers, so they went back home. I mean, four people that were half of the company, basically. <laughs> So they go back home, and now I'm in the office. I don't have a job role. I'm hired as an intern. So I go to the office every day doing basically nothing. When everybody comes back on the 5th of January, I'm told, your manager is fired. You are the manager. <laughs> I go, OK. I don't know what that means, but I'm the manager. I'll take the upgrade. So I'm acting all manager-like, and so in five days, Vishen and Mike, who was the business partner at the time, are coming back to the office. They're like, you got to prepare the quarterly presentation. I was like, OK, I'll figure out how to make the quarterly presentation. So I make a presentation asking people around, like, what, do you, what, what are the numbers? How do I find them? Where do I find them? I make the quarterly presentation, and I'm presenting very confidently, like a manager. I wore a shirt that day, too. I was like, manager says, uh, these are the numbers, this is what we did last quarter, so on and so forth. And very confidently, like how Vishen is sometimes, is sitting, listening to the presentation and says, well, Ajit, that's all great, but you're about $100,000 short. Like, I am $100,000 short? I am even a dollar short. I don't make no money here. What are you talking about? <laughs> and he goes, no, in your numbers, you're $100,000 short for your revenue of your department. I'm like, oh, OK, I didn't know there was a goal there. I'm just presenting numbers. <laughs> and I'm like, OK, what am I supposed to do? He's like, well, you got to make that up in the next month. I was like, OK, I'll make it up in the next month. Now, I thought this must be really common, right? Because who would tell a new intern, you're a manager, <laughs> and then you're supposed to make $100,000 in a month? I thought, oh, you was just sit in the business, and it makes itself. That's how I thought business ran. At least because I didn't know anything about this business or personal growth at that time. Remember, the only book I've read until now is Move My Cheese, which is a you know, legendary book. Very deep personal growth. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, fine, I'll figure it out. I'm, I'm smart. Or so I thought I'm smart, right? Hardworking, capable. Because I'm like, yeah, I'm 24. I thought I'm like the shit. I got the manager title. <laughs> 10 days into a job, I must be the shit, right? So I'm like, all right, I'll figure it out. I go, I'll figure it out. And I'm Googling and blogging and whatever the heck, you know, trying to figure it out. First week goes by, I've not figured out anything. The second week goes by, I haven't figured out anything. The third week comes along, and I'm like, next week, you got to make that money somehow. <laughs> Else, you're going to go back to India. And you are that kid that walked out on the job, so he's not taking you back. Your mom told you, don't leave. This is a good job you have. But you quit the job, so she's, get to, she's gonna say, you know, her favorite thing. <laughs> I told you so. <laughs> you know. Right? The friends are gonna be like, haha, look, comes the legend. <laughs> <laughs> right? So I'm like, dude, you're screwed. <laughs> And so I, I'm like, all right, what, what am I going to do? And I'm twisting and turning. It's like Saturday night, Sunday night, something like that. And I'm going, all right, so this is the week, bro. Final week. you got to figure this out, right? So I'm, of course, not getting any sleep that night. Now, here is how confident Mind Valley was in me. They didn't even assign me a room when I moved to Malaysia. They gave me a couch. <laughs> they said, you're going to sleep on this couch in this house where three other people lived. That's how temporary they thought I was. <laughs> Tell them now, 15 years. <laughs> so I'm sleeping on this couch, twisting and turning, obviously up till really late in the night. And one of the roommates, one of the people who actually had a room, comes in next morning and says, hey, let's go to office together. And we walk into office together. And he clearly must have realized that I'm in trouble, that I have no idea what I'm doing. He was, doing a, he was a business manager of a different thing. So he's walking with me, and he goes, He's Spanish. I'm going to try and imitate an accent. Don't, like, you know. They're like, so Ajit. Actually, I'm not going to imitate. It's terrible. <laughs> so Ajit, how's that campaign going? Did you cover the $100,000? Do you know how to cover the $100,000? And 
And in my heart, I was like, absolutely, Ajit, you will figure it out. Tell him, yes, I got it. I got it. And thankfully, I didn't say that. But what I said was, I have no freaking idea, man. I have no freaking idea. He said, would you like help? <laughs> How many of us have been in a situation for long enough before asking for help? Yeah, three weeks in on a four-week timeline. <laughs> this guy, very cocky. Like, I sure can need help. I can use some help. Who I knew, I think, that this was the breaking point. Because he was carrying this really extra large bag that day, and he took out like four DVDs from the bag while we were walking to office, hands it over to me and said, watch this all day today. Your answer is in there. He hands me over the DVDs all day. I watched those DVDs. It was like different programs, marketing programs, all these internet marketing things that I had no clue until now what to do with. I'm watching these, watching these, watching these, and I find one campaign. I'm like, this is brilliant. This campaign sounds just about right. So I quickly draft up a campaign. I send it out to the world. One day goes by, second day goes by, third day goes by. Next week, I have that meeting. Next week in the meeting, I'm standing, and I'm presenting the numbers, presenting the numbers, presenting the numbers. And Vision goes, did you make those $100,000? I said, oh, no, we didn't make the $100,000. We made $120,000 over the weekend. I learned three lessons or three things that I want you to remember how to 20x yourself. Because that day, I didn't only make the $120,000. That day, for many, many years to go, we found a model that would make Mindvalley. Because after that, Mindvalley learned how to make aggressive revenue with the same kind of products that they had. Does that make sense? Yeah. So the Mindvalley you saw today or see today is based on many campaigns that I'm sure you have experienced because you're bought from it. But those campaigns were developed in those times when we didn't know because what I also didn't know when I made the $120,000 that Mindvalley had never done that before. <laughs> Nobody knew how to do that. And they all had the same DVDs. <laughs> but here's what is to learn. It's not because I was brilliant. It's because there are three very important things that we must all know the moment we know what is our 20x vision, where we are going, what is our desire, and that is why, who, and how. Why, who, and how. Why is it that your desire will come true? Why is it that you're in the situation that you're in? Why is it that the universe has put you through what it's putting you through. It was hell back then. The three weeks, it was hell. Every single night, I was questioned, why are you here? Why are you here in the discomfort of a different country, sleeping on a couch? Why are you here to learn all this stuff that you know nothing about? Why is it that even your manager coincidentally gets fired? Why, why? Why? There is a reason why. There is a reason why you have got the desire that you were just given. You don't know why, but you need to know there is a why. You may not know it exactly, and that's okay, because you're in it. You will know it when you have that desire fulfilled. I know today why. I didn't know it then. It sucked like hell. I felt like shit every single day. But today I know why. Ask why are you here? Because there's a reason why, and that will give you the force that you need to stay committed to your desire. Look for who. See, the problem with us is we think we are, we are the shit, right? I am the shit, right? Problem with that thinking? You know all those people who say work really hard? How many of us think work really hard? Or we have heard work really hard? Have worked really hard? Right? Right? You know the problem with working really hard? 
You're working with a brain. You're just you. And when you are just you, you can't go far. You only have those many hours in a day. You can only work that hard. Good luck thinking you're the most brilliant person on planet Earth. Even that person understands one big difference. It's not your brain that gets you what you want. It's your mind. Mind is not you going at it. Mind is us going at it. See, Juan had to show up because he was my who. Who is it that needs to come into your life for your desires to come true? Not a person. Don't give it a name because I know some of you will say, Mine Wally. <laughs> no, it's not a person. It's a character. It's characteristics. Sometimes it's a partner like Nita in my life. I don't know if she's here. I saw her some time ago, but if she's here, raise your hand. Yeah. A character. I didn't even know Nita is going to show up, but since Nita has been in my life, I have maybe 200 x Because it's a character that needs to show up. It needs to be a who. Who shows up. Ask yourself, who is it that I need to have by my side so I can 20x? Right? Is this making sense? Yes? Kaya's husband had to show up for her, the who she needed in her life for her to 20x. There are people in your life who are already showing up or will be showing up, but you need to know who that is. For your brain to become your mind, stop operating in silos. Stop operating just by yourself. The greatest gift you can give to yourself is the gift of relationship. Sometimes they're life partners. Sometimes they're business partners. Sometimes they're the right friend. But you need to know your who. I see some of the who's right there. A lot of love floating in there. I love it. You know I love it. Or a coach, sure. But you gotta know who. You gotta write their characteristics so they can show up for you. And then, the final thing, and I know that's the hard thing here, is the how. See, once we have this big desire, the unfortunate thing is, if I think about imp uh, impacting 100,000 people, 100,000 coaches, I'll be fucking scared. It's a big desire. It's a very big desire, isn't it? At least for me, it's a very big desire. Maybe it's not for you. It's a very big desire. I get goosebumps, which also means I am scared. I'm scared shitless. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means for me. I don't know what that means for the world. I don't know how to do it. But that's exactly why I need to start thinking in pathways thinking. Pathways thinking is to think that there is that destination I need to go to. But I need to first set the path. And I need to start walking this path so I can get to that desire one day. But first, I need to start. I can't impact 100,000 coaches if I dare not even create a program. And that's where I was in 2019. I dare not even create a program. I would have authors, trainers, but I would not write CBC even if my team told me so. I would not write it. I was like, no way. They kept telling me, you need to write it. You're so successful at it. Why don't you write it? I would dare not write it. But if I want to get there, I need to deal with this stuff first. What is your how? What is it that sets you on the course so you can get to what you truly desire. Is this resonating? Yes. Do you feel it? Yes. Do you feel you can have that desire? Yes. Do you feel you can have that desire? Yes. If you have a desire, claim it. And when you claim a desire, you don't claim it. <laughs> you claim it. You declare it. So I want you to give me, if you are ready, to claim your desire. Yes. That's more like it. That's more like it. 
Now, I want to give you one last thing. Last thing. And it is, there's a dance that we need to have with this big desire that we have in the end. See, when you write or experience or, you know, feel your big desire, there's going to be two words or one word that, that's very important to note. And that's the word called need. Need. I need this to happen. I need this to happen. I need this to be realized. Need. I want you to treat need almost as a dirty word now. <laughs> See, need has the energy of scarcity. When you need something, it feels like I don't have it. You operate from this place where it feels, I need this. Anybody been a needy boyfriend or girlfriend until now? <laughs> or at least had a needy boyfriend or girlfriend? <laughs> How did that feel? Amazing, right? It's terrible. You don't need your desires. You want your desires. You want to live in the abundance of desires. A little funny story. One of my desires that I declared two years ago was, I said, and funny, not funny, we'll see. Uh, but two years ago, I had, uh, I had a moment that I shared with you when me and Ari were playing and I had a realization that I want to be a different version of myself health-wise. And one of the ways I expressed that, or actually the way that I expressed that to myself, was to, my desire was one day, and I'm sharing this also so you can feel how visceral, how real a desire sounds like, and how you can make it visceral and real if it's not real for you, is I, I said, as I take off my shirt, I'm watching myself in the mirror, my wife looks at me and says, what a sexy boy. <laughs> and then a lot of stuff I cannot say because it's not PG-18. <laughs> Kids are here. But you get it. I said that, and when I said that to myself every day as I was feeling my desire, I was like, mm. I was having my body talk. The hollow body people know that. Yes, the hollow body people know what I talk about. I'm doing my body talk, and I'm telling myself, mm. when I take off my shirt, my wife looks at me and treats me like a piece of meat. <laughs> you get my point. And I'm telling myself that every day, and every day I feel it. You can, again, camera, goosebumps. <laughs> and so I still feel it. It could be just because of arousal, like Vishen was talking about, but you get my drift. So anyway, so I'm feeling it every single day. It's visceral, it's real for me. I, I want this for me to happen. Now, I don't want this Nita to really say that to me, but I want this to happen. It's a story in my mind. I've told this story myself a thousand times now because every day I would wake up, I'd tell myself this story. Just a few months ago, I am normally changing my clothes. Nita walks from behind and she says, when I met you, touches my shoulder and goes, when I met you, you were a Pillsbury Doughboy. And then touches my abs and goes, and now you're my sexy boy toy. <laughs> Is Nita in the room? I don't know if she's there. It sounds ridiculous to some of you. It's like, what the fuck are you talking about, Ajit? But the reason why I tell, even if it's a ridiculous story, at least sometimes when I tell it sounds ridiculous, I don't know if it is at all, but the, thank you for acknowledging. I feel safe now a little bit more. <laughs> When I was thinking about it, when I was telling it to my group at Accelerated, I was like, I don't know if I should be telling this story at all to anyone. This is so personal. But it is personal, isn't it? Yes. Our desires are personal. Yes. You want to be sexy. Whatever sexy means for you, it doesn't have to mean what it means to me, but you want to be sexy. You want to be energetic. You want to have the money. You want the clients. You want the impact. You want to be seen. You want to be recognized. You want to have that impact in society. Why wouldn't you have it? Why would we negotiate that shit? 
So stop needing all that shit. Want it. What I wish for you is when I see you a year from now, two years from now, five years from now, you have 20x yourself. And that would be my present. Thank you.